social media. We bless you and we send out this warm welcome this morning and thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. For every church door that is open, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. This morning, we just want to come and give God an uh, awesome praise, an awesome praise. We want to lift him up here. Amen. Amen. If we will have our praise team come up. Hallelujah. We want to go and we want to reach heavens. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm simply says, we love to call your name. Amen. Because we know that when we call anybody else's name, it doesn't have any power. Amen. But when we call on the name of Jesus, when we call on God, he can change the atmosphere. Things have to change. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. your name it's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name we love to call your name it's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name Your name is something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to call your name in something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name.
Hallelujah, we know that, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. You've been so good. I know he's been good to me this week. Hallelujah. I've had some good days this week. But later on in the week, it got a little bit topsy-turvy. The enemy is busy. Hallelujah. But we step on his we step on his head. Hallelujah. Because God, you are good. Hallelujah. You've opened many doors. Hallelujah. Lord, you've blessed us. You've healed our bodies. God, you've done all that you said you would do, God. Hallelujah. And Lord, we're thankful because of that. Because we're not worthy. But God. Amen. But God. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. You've been so good. So good to me. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, God, we've been so good, we've been so good, we've been so good to me. Lord, you are good. 
that was better than good. We know he's great. But sometimes, you know, it's not a word, but you say he keeps getting gooder and gooder because you just can't explain the goodness of God. You don't understand. God has brought me a mighty long way. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to make it. I would have lost my mind. I'd have been stirred crazy. But God kept me in his loving arms that he just helped me. When I wanted to give up and I wanted to throw in the towel, he reminded me, oh, but it's not your race. It's the race that I called you to run. Hallelujah. You can't quit right now. You're this close. You're this close. You're this close to the breakthrough. You're this close. So you got to stick in there. You got to battle it. You got to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because of that, my testimony is that I just love him more than anything. You know, women, we give birth to children. And, and you know, we love our husbands. We love our husbands. I, lo I love my husband. I do, dearly. But it's something about carrying a child in your womb for nine months. Ten months, actually. You carry these children and they just they're one with you and every move they make you feel everything you eat they get it's something about it that you just love but you know what i found you know i've been through some things in my life this is my second marriage and i thought he loved me but it didn't work out like that then i got married again and, and he loves me but he can't love me like God loves me because God created me so it's a different kind of love I love my children I have three beautiful daughters one handsome son a beautiful granddaughter and a beautiful grandson and y'all know I'm crazy about my grandkids I love them but you don't know they're all going to leave me one day. they all going to leave me one day. But God, he's the one thing that's going to stay with me. He's going to stay with me. And I know those of you who may not have a husband or a wife, the love of God sustains you. It's, you don't feel incomplete when you got God. Hallelujah. It's okay to lay down by yourself at night because you got God. God, I am who I am because of him, and I love you. I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hand. In total adoration unto you, you reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone, because of you my cloudy days are gone, I can sing to you this song, I just want to say that I Love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you. I can sing. 
speak to you. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. Oh, Lord, do you reign for oh, you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything Where you can be a part of this service right here. Tell him how much he means to you. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. My walk is to be like Jesus more and more and more and more every day. I kill this flesh daily so that I can be everything that he called me to be. I just want y'all to know that this is not a game. This is serious. This is serious. We got to work. We got to work. 
we have to work diligently consistently doing our very best to be all that God called us to be anything less anything less can get you to go to a less desired place I know that we all have an idea of how hot it gets in Texas but can you imagine the heat that it is in hell I can't stand the heat that it is in Texas at the hottest month in August can you just imagine how hot it would be in hell if we had to look up for the rest of our life and look at all that we could have had because we slipped I don't want that to be me I don't even want to look down at the people in hell because I can't imagine what that would be like the Bible said that there are streets paved in gold the land of milk and honey he says when we get there and if we've done all the things that God has asked he's going to give us a crown and if we've been real good we get some gems in our crown. Hallelujah. I want God to be well pleased with me. I, I want to take, I want to take Kamani with me. I want to take Xavier. I want to take Lady Vicky. I want to see all my family in heaven. Lady Brenda, I want to see the kids. Kiana and Kayla and Jordan. I want to see y'all in heaven. We come, we do this every week, every Sunday. So just slip up on Monday. Come on, y'all. Hell is real. Hell is real. Lady Vicky, you can you can be seated. Hell is real. And I, I just want to tell you that when I was thinking about all that God has told me, all that God has shown me. All that God has brought me through. Hallelujah. He talked about a timetable. And you know, uh, I got my kids here today, my youth. And I know you can all understand this. When they ask you, what time is this? What time is this? And y'all might say something else, you know. But I'm saying the time is that we focus in and tune in to what God is saying okay God has given us the opportunity to have time and our scripture reading and, and message for today is coming from Ephesians 5 15 through 17 and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Amen. So if you can turn to it, because I don't want you to just take my word for it, because it's not my word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you first of all, God. Lord, asking for your forgiveness, God, for any sin that I, have made, that I may have committed knowingly and unknowingly, God. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given me, God, to stand before your people, God. Lord, I'm asking, God, that you just cleanse me up right now, God. If there is anything unpure about me, God, I'm asking that you remove it, God, so that they can hear this word of truth, God, and let it permeate through their body, God. Let it go through their ears, and God, let it stain in their heart, God, so that they can keep it with them wherever they go, God. Oh, Lord, but not only let them stay there, God, let them put the word into action, God, so that they can move into it. Lord, let it be a light that draws people out of darkness, God. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm asking that you do it in me first, God, so that when it flow through me, God, it can flow out unto these walls, God, outside these doors into your people, God, into the mouth so that they can go and spread it abroad, Jesus. Lord, and I ask all these things 
in your son's name and i'll be careful god with everything that you ask me to do and to say and where to go god i am a willing vessel god and i will do it in the name of jesus amen amen so as we look at ephesians 15 5 15 and 17 the new living translation version reads so be careful how you live don't live like fools but like those who are wise make the most of every opportunity in these evil days don't act thoughtlessly but understand what the lord wants you to do amen may it be a blessing into the readers and hearers and doers of his holy name so let's talk about time let's talk about time. to be honest none of us can say at this time we've been really too busy because with COVID from 2019 until now God has restored us some time we've had time to sit at home some of us are working from home some of us have been able to be furloughed with pay or unemployment so that means you're able to be at home have time for yourself amen we're talking about time what have we done with this time is the question what have we done and what are we doing with the time that God has given back to us amen this passage of scripture the writer Paul talks about the importance time uh, the importance of time and the time that we have with God now I know that when I was younger I thought I had all the time in the world and time was based on what I wanted it to be if I wanted to sleep till 11 I slept till 11 on the weekends I, I didn't get up and just do what I do now because I was young and I thought I had a whole lifetime of time but the Lord woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning because I struggled with what he wanted me to say but when I knuckled down and I just listened and stole away because I was doing a whole lot of other things with the time God says I'm not gonna let you get up and mess up what I have for my people in this chosen hour so he woke me up this morning at four o'clock he didn't change the message but he gave me an important example Sometimes when I get up, I pray and I say, Lord, what would you have for me? I didn't hear anything. So I began to pull out my phone and I began to scroll through my messenger and look at things on my phone, play the little game, a game of makeover. And then some said, go to Snapchat. I normally don't do that, but I do occasionally because I have nieces and I have children. So I like to snoop on there and see what they put on their Snapchat. I got to keep an eye out on what they doing because those are my legacies there my nieces and nephews my children and I need to know what's going on um, I don't know how to work it all that well but I know how to be I know enough to be dangerous as they say so when I was looking on there I was on my niece's page and she put on there a 19 year old boy got killed he was an innocent bystander I believe um, it was a gang shooting he was 19 19 he lives here in Fort Worth I believe 19 see we're talking about time at 19 who's thinking about dying when I was 19 I thought I had like I said all the time in the world to do whatever I wanted to do at that time I was trying to figure out am I gonna go to college am I gonna stay in college uh, you know what I'm gonna do and then, then at 19 I was pregnant so then <laughs> And that told me what I was to do so my time changed a little bit but 
I wasn't thinking about death. I was thinking about everything in the world but that. And I wasn't thinking about getting up giving God glory either. Even though I was raised in church. As soon as I turned 18. And I said, oh, it's a whole world out there. Our girl can't make me come and come to a house this weekend. So I'm not going to go. But I thank God for never leaving me and never that still voice. He left it there. So I never just went too far out. But as I began to scroll through that, my spirit began to feel sick because this child, I began to think about the mother of this child, the father. Oh, my God, what it would be like if that was me and my child or my nieces or nephews. See, we living in a time right now, it's, it, that was a game, but we got COVID. We got all other kind of stuff that's taking us out early. We don't have time anymore. That's why I love it when our children come here. Because you never know what's out there. You have to praise God now. I know it's not cool when you walk around wearing Jesus shirts and all that stuff. And, and I'm going to say this because I can only tell you my experiences, what I deal with. I know my nieces and nephews don't think I'm the coolest person. They tell me all the time. TT, you not even cool, TT. Oh, you so, oh, you just, oh, it ain't got nothing to do with hallelujah, praise God, you know. You know, but you know, you don't understand what it's like. I'm 50 and I've I've seen at least six of my friends die at least five years ago Bef before they even made it to 45. I've seen or I've read that several of their sons have been murdered before they made it to 25. So it's okay if I'm holy. It's okay if that's what you think. Because if you see and say that, then guess what? I'm doing, I'm doing something that God is pleased with. I'm not here to tell you, oh, yeah, you can wear that short dress. Or, yeah, you can be out there fornicating and having sex, you know, making babies without being married. No, I'm not going to condone that. But I still love you. So if that's being not cool, get used to it. Because I'm not changing. Sorry. I still love you though. Um, God loved me. I wasn't always like this. I, I wasn't perfect. I had a child out of wedlock. Okay. But God. That's why I won't give up on you. I might not speak to you for a month or two. But it's okay. God working on me with that too. Because I still need to talk to you. Because I need to make sure you're hearing the word of God and if I'm not telling you I don't, I don't know if you know so but as you grow and I'm telling you right now as you grow up you have kids or you will have kids you're going to need to know the foundation of Jesus and what he did how we've been redeemed time starts from the time you exited your mother's womb your time began then so you don't have time to play everything God has for you is good if you do it the way he wants you to do it and he wants you to have fun the Bible talks about believe it or not if you pick it up and read it like I tell you guys the Bible tells you it's a balance. God wants you to have a balance. It's okay to sing. It's okay to dance. It's okay to do all those things. But you got to do it by giving him the glory. You got to do it by giving him the glory. I'm not saying, you know, they, you know, it's, it's okay to listen to rap. But listen to the certain kind of rap. It don't even have to be gospel now back when i was growing up now i don't know i may be wrong but i'm not that big on rap period but i think ll cool j rap without having all them cuss words and stuff 
you know, I, I, I don't know because, but what I remember, I don't remember LL Cool J saying that. Or what's that? MC Hammer. Well, he, well, he might have been a rapper. I don't know. But uh, I didn't hear him cussing out women in the rap, making them feel degraded and all of that. It's, you know, because I'm saying if you're singing these songs and you're saying all of this stuff, what are you saying about who you are? You know, women, we're letting each other call each other names and female dog, you know, that's not what God says. God says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. If I was a dog, I would have four legs. I would walk down here, but I'm not. So why would it be cool for somebody to call you that and you be okay with it? It's a balance. We should call each other names that are terms of endearment. You know, I, I'm. That's just me. I've never liked it. I've never liked it. I'll never. I'll never accept it. And back in the day, before I was saved, we gonna fight about it. But God has delivered me from that, and um, we we just not gonna have it. We just we not we not gonna do it. We we not. Um, but I want you to know that the time starts now. And I want you to understand that we need to seek counseling. The Bible is a manual. It's a book. An application for our life. According to the way he wants us to live. He is our creator. He made us. So he knows how to instruct us in every way, believe it or not. The Bible has everything pertaining to your life, your issues, your trials, your situations. Everything is in this book. Amen. Everything. Nothing new under the sun. Been there. The Bible handles it. So when we look at our schedule, those of us who work, kids, you know, you have a curriculum in school when we look at our schedule and we put down what's going on where are we putting in God and I don't need you to show of hands or anything like that but I'm, I'm just put this question out there and I want you to really think on it from the, from the time that we're talking about this message and from the time you leave and then if the answer is not what you think it should be then I want you to change it when you wake up in the morning what is the first thing that you do? And I want you to say, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Because you're only fooling yourself. God already knows. Me, on most days, before I get up, when my eyes open, I lay in bed for about two, three minutes. And I'm not going to say I go into deep prayer and all of that because sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do. But the first thing I do is I say, Lord, I thank you for opening my eyes, for waking me up from my sleeping bed. Lord, I thank you. I, I exalt him first. I do that. I've learned to do that. And now that I'm 50, <laughs> I got to do that because these legs just don't pop up out the bed. When I stand up, I got to stand up. I got to shake a little bit and do all that and get balanced. Because as you get older, your equilibrium is off. You go jump out of bed. Anybody over 50, jump up out of bed right now and, and then try to move and see if you don't fall all over into the dress. That may be me. And I'm just saying, I, that's my experience in this 50-year-old body. So I struggle in the morning. I got to get there. I got to hold on. Then first, before I do that, I have to get these eyes on. Because I can't see. I'm going to fall and can't see me falling. That's bad. That's bad. But what is the first thing you do in the morning? Do you give him the glory? See, we, we don't need to pencil God in. God is not some last minute thought. 
he is last. The word says he's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. In the beginning was him. And it's still him. And it's going to always be him. And whether you give it to him or not, it's not going to change. So we need to stop giving him what we got left. Because let's just think about it. Let's flip the script. What if we called on him when we really needed him and he didn't answer? What if you're on your deathbed and say, God, I need you. Lord, I call right now. God, heal me. Touch me. And he zoned out. He in Zumba class. You know, or turning up. Y'all young kid turning up. What if he don't listen when you texting and driving and somebody ride by you? I'm saying you ain't even looking because you down on your phone. What if you call out and he don't hear you? How would it feel if he wasn't there for you? Think about that. We do that to him every day, all day. All he wants is just a hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He didn't say Spend all your days. Now the word said meditate with meditate on me both day and night. But he didn't say all night, all day. Give him some time. I know it's early to get here at eight o'clock in the morning. But we can be at work on time, some of us. I have to be. I have to be at work on time. But it was a time that I wasn't. But if I can be on time for anything that I, because I'll be on time for what I want to be on time for. If it's something that I really want to do, I'm going to be on time. If they had a shoe sale at Macy's and the shoes was $15.99 and they was going to be 9 to 11, I bet you I'm going to be there at 9 o'clock if I really want those shoes. But we, we can't push that for God. God been blessing us, and I know this going to hurt for some. And if it do, hey, ouch, and make it better. You ain't got no money. But you got all these stimulus checks and everything. How many of us paid taxes? Yeah, we paid them taxes and all of that. And we're going to get some taxes. But how many of you came in here and put that envelope? In a tie, a tie, put your money in a tithe envelope. The Bible say everything comes from the hills, which give us strength. We we talking about all, but how many of us are paying tithes? But we, but when we broke, we can come all fall up in here in church and ask the church to help. But you don't even pay tithe. That's a problem. I'm just saying, a tenth is his. All of it is his, but all he asks for is a tenth. And those of you who don't have a job, what do you do? Kids, you tithe your time. Give your tenth of a the tenth of your time to God. I tell my kids when they were young, everybody had to come to church. You do all you want to do, but you're going to come to church on Sunday if you live in my house. My nieces and nephews will tell you if they're at my house, they're going to church. If you come to my house when you're grown, like my daughter was just as she's 32. If you put a bag down, even if you didn't stay the night, you're coming to church. We'll fight about it. All night. My money's that I, I get on them. If you don't see them, it's not because I didn't tell them. And you can guarantee I'm fussing at my sister, my brother in law, because I tell them that they, they need to be here. They need to be here. We all need to be here. I didn't call my cousin, but I thank God she in the house because I, I was so busy. I was so, so busy. And my uncle called me last night 
and he said, did you call Kapu? I said, no, and it's late. So I'm not going to give a pass this week. But God didn't give you a pass. And I, may, I, I just give all glory. I give all glory because he the only one that's going to be able to sustain her. And sometimes I'm not going to be here, but you need to be here. It's not about who's here. It's you. And I thank God for that. I thank God for all of you being here. Amen. We need to be real careful about what we do with the time God has given us because he's checking for that. Amen. He's checking for that. He is the master timekeeper. So everything that you're doing, especially in schools, I don't even know now. I don't have any kids in school anymore that I really keep up with. But I don't know. Did they put prayer back in the school when they say the Pledge of Allegiance? Is it back? A moment of silence. What <laughs> we do a moment of silence. What if God took a moment of silence over the world? Have you I just got to what if that had happened? What 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 would you remember when, when Jesus hung and they showed the movie The Passion of Christ, how the how the, the clouds in the sky turned black? What if what if he did take a moment of silence? Just imagine if the world just went black like that. Just think what would happen. Crime, deaths. Just imagine. And we taking a moment of silence. <laughs> oh, God. We're going to have to pray for our leaders and our government. Amen. More than ever. Because we don't have time for a moment of silence. Like, you know, the people say, oh, you get a time out. What, what we say is time in. In my house, I don't put no kids in time out. I put time, I put hands on time in. It's okay. If you do it the right way, now I got to say that, you know, I don't want nobody in my office for, for, for doing nothing wrong to kids. It's a way to do everything. And that's what the Bible is. It's a way and it's a time for everything. It's a season for everything. We need to walk wisely so that we make the precious years that God has allowed us count. We need to walk wisely. We need to seek his counsel. How many of you know that God is a sovereign God over time? In Ephesians 5.11, it reads, We must walk carefully and redeem the time that he gives us. This will ensure that our life will count for eternity. Everything that we do, we do it to what? To get into heaven, to live that everlasting life. When you graduate, we go to school all these years, we, we live to graduate. I mean, what we go to school for? And I, now I got kids say they don't want to walk across the stage. I think one of my one of my nieces said some stuff like that. Yeah. I don't want to walk. Oh, you gonna walk across this. This ain't about you. This ain't just about you. I had to make sure that you was able to eat so that you can sleep, so that you can live, so that you can get to school. So I want to see you. That's mine. I told my son, you walking across high school stage is for me. You walking across the college stage is for you. So you're going to walk across. And, and it was hard on parents who couldn't see their kids graduate high school. It was the kids couldn't even graduate college. One of my God nieces, she graduated from UNT and we couldn't even see it. I mean, that's a lot, especially I'm not saying it's not important in any, but black people, that's a, a awesome accomplishment to graduate college. And you can't even walk across. I, that had me messed up. And I just thank God that when mine came across in 2018, he just, we just made it. You talking about somebody who would have been boohooing. I, baby, I, I, mm -mm, that was hard for me. I was so proud of my son. 
to see him and and I think a couple of my other my niece. Oh, we had a lot of people graduate. Justice, Hubert, and Dave. They all graduated. We was from one school to the next school, but it was okay because that was something wonderful. God is trying to graduate us. Everything we do, God does not want us to stay in this position. He takes us as a babe and you get off of breast milk to, to whole milk. And then he wants to see you over here ministering the gospel. Go ye and teach. That's all of our responsibility, not just preachers. Amen. So we want to see God's guidance about what we should do and how we should do it is very important. And when we don't, sometimes it could cost us a valuable lesson. And at the worst, a grave lesson. Sometimes it costs us our, our life. We should think about being a godly person every day. For God is holy. We are created in his image. So if he is our father, what should we have? If he is holy, we should be holy. It tells us that we are not of this world. We live in it, but we are not of this world. So we shouldn't operate like the world operates. We might have to function in it. But we don't have to do everything that it does. Amen. So we need to think about holiness. We need to give God his just due. Now. So even if it's today. You make it a commitment to do it today. So you messed up all the rest of your time. God has given you this time to start new. Give God what is his. God is a God of purpose, time, holiness, and love. Jesus lived to accomplish his father's purpose. Amen. And I just want to give you one example. And I'm coming to a close. Moses. I wrote over here somewhere. Moses was depicted as a reference of time. Perfect person of time management. When you get home, read in Psalms 90. Moses' life and his time frame. Check this out. Moses spent 40 years as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He spent 40 years as a fugitive shepherd and then 40 years leaving a rebellious Israelite out of slavery. You see how that was time? It wasn't 29, 28. It was 40, 40, 40. And then just then when he just thought that it was over, he ended, he ended his life in prayer. And he said, if I've done all of this and I gain nothing, Lord, I, I know it's not worth anything unless you confirm it to be. But he spent all of his life doing what he was told by God. If you read, nothing in there was pleasing. 40 years as Pharaoh's daughter. And you know that there was requirements of, of that. Then he was 40 years a shepherd. Then to lead a rebellious group of people. I mean, I just think you, I only had three kids. And when they were rebellious, I was like, oh my God, I thought that was just overwhelming. But 40 years of a country of rebellious people, he did that. So give God his just due. In order to walk wisely, we must know what God wants us to do, how he wants us to do it. And then because he's such an awesome God, he tells us warnings. He tells us what to avoid. 
and how to take advantages of the opportunities that he's given us. Know what God wants you to be and how to get there. Glorify and please him with your life. Get to know God more deeply. Have a relationship with him. Let him be your BFF. Be and live a godly life to the best of your ability every day. Now, when I say live and 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 be and live a godly life, I'm not saying be perfect. But I said wake up with the will to do that. We all fall short. But wake up with the will to want to be better. Proclaim his excellence through your life. I tell everybody, I used to complain that people get mad at me about OCD. My sister, my sister don't like it. Because I go by and I go over her house and I be like, oh, this house is OCD. And it's not my house. But I do it. I, I'm sorry. Miss, Miss Lady Brenda know me now because she worked with me. It's just I I do it everywhere and only and I and that might be offensive to some, but it's about excellence. I mean, if I see something that I can make better, I mean, don't you you know? I wish somebody had a wine that could make some of this be better. You know, I'm saying I'm working on it every day. I'm trying to be better about it, but there's nothing wrong with it. You're not gonna be perfect. But try, try. Discipline yourself for purpose and godliness. That's something that we have to do. I discipline myself because now they've, 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 you're what I said, they've diagnosed me with diabetes. They have. But God, we, we, we working with what he say. But I'm going to use wisdom and I'm going to follow what they say, don't drink sodas. So I cut that out. Now I say, I'm trying. I ain't cut everything out. I'm working on it. But I discipline myself. Now when I sit down and we went to Red Lobster. Oh, was it Saturday, Friday? Even though my brother-in-law complained about my uh, ordering and whatever he was complaining about, whatever. He said he didn't want to go to lunch with me no more, but too bad. You and this family, you married into it, and I'm your sister-in-law, so you're going to see me. So, um, I, 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 he took all them biscuits, I thank God. But I, I had one biscuit, because I can't eat bread, because it's not good, the, carbo the carbohydrates. So, I have learned to discipline myself from things that I even, I, so I do better. So, I discipline myself to get here at 8 o'clock on Sunday. It's hard. I'm not a morning person. But I get here. We have to discipline ourselves. Intake and apply God's word. Intake, that means read it, take it in, eat it, chew it up, swallow it, digest it, and then apply it. That means let it work, and then you do the work of what you inhale. Amen? I want to break that down for the kids because, you know, you know, they say, let it go in here and in one ear and out the other. No, that's not what I said. I said, bite it, eat it, swallow it, digest it, then let it reproduce. Learn to think biblically towards life. Stop looking at life as I can do what the Joneses do. We need to be starting saying, I need to do what Jesus say do. She called me ugly. You were, you beautiful. Because it's naturally to say you were. Back in the day, we say, yo mama, yo mama. Now we can't say that because you'll get shot. Don't talk about my mama. But don't do what you see the world do when you know better. Learn to think biblically about everything. Sometimes, you know, our spouses make us mad. I've learned to, 
I'm like, I, I, this is new for me, y'all. I've learned to not speak quickly. I speak after I've prayed. Because sometimes, you know, it burns. <laughs> you know, your boss come in there and be like, I told you. And you be like, who are you, who are you, ta- who are you talking to? Especially when you got a younger boss. Now, I work for myself, but I have to keep the lines of professionalism open because I work with caseworkers that are 26. And she'll come, Miss Coretta, you're going to be at the appointment because the family say they there. I had to say, I could have birthed you. That's what I, that's what you know. But I can't say that because I want to keep handling her cases and I want her to be a good reference and a referral so I can't I'd be like good morning are you having a wonderful day oh how you doing Miss Coretta I'm just saying because the family call see if I'd have snapped back we could have it would have but you have to do that because it's happened it's happened this girl 26 I'm 50 are you calling me at 8 in the morning yelling at me first of all these your cases I'm doing you a favor because you're working from home. When I'm out here dealing with these kids that might have corona and all this snot and stuff, and I'm, you know, I didn't show up because they sick. But you have to, you have to handle everything. You have to be slow to react, quick to think about what God is requiring of you. If you know better, do better. So in my closing, get get ready because we're going to go and start collecting our tithes and offering. I want you to I want you to walk away with something today. Time management. I want you to walk away when you, you start your day tomorrow or when you start your afternoon. I want you to dedicate time for God. Dedicate time for him. Don't put him in at 3.45 to to 4 o'clock. Put him in first. If you give it to him first, fresh off the top, your day, I guarantee you, will go much better. Apply everything that I have told you about. And let's be better. Let's hold each other accountable. Amen? Because... The Bible tells us right here, and this is this is the this is the warning that he gives us when we don't do what we say, when we don't do what he says. In Luke 9 25, it reads, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit your very self? We know it's some real rich people in here what's the what's the man I, I i'm not a sports fan so don't nobody i'm not a texan either so don't nobody get offended what's the man jerry jones is he okay he got a lot of money but what does all of that matter he can't take it with him and if he don't serve the god we serve he's not gonna get to go where we go so even jerry jones need god with all that money. You know what about that that uh king had so much money and they said it would be harder for him for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Cause you're not serving a God that's asking you to do simple things. And and it says it's simple. He gave us ten commandments, but he said if we love each other. If we just love, if you, it, I, I ain't no way that I could get mad at Kimani if I love him and just, just operate out of love because you're not going to hurt nothing you love. So if we could just start by loving everybody. Amen. If we could just start by doing that, loving, having compassion for someone else. Treating them as if you would want somebody to treat you. Lord, no, I, I, 
I learned a long time ago, EGR. Anybody know what EGR mean? Extra grace required. We all know some people like that. I've been a person, I've been that person before. I'm a Gemini. And uh, I didn't know for many years that I had different moods just living in here. And that they could just pop up at any given moment. And, you know, before I started walking with God and he started using me, it was rough. And I needed some EGR, extra grace required. You know, we all do at times. We all can be at our lowest point. But God never gave up on us. He never have. And he never will. He gave his only begotten son because he loved us so much. He just was like, he was like, I'm going to just curse. I'm going I'm to do everything. But you know what? He never, he never quit. He never quit. I love my only son. I couldn't have done it. Take me first. I'm not going to give you my baby. I love him. But God said he loved us so much that he sacrificed the thing that was most dearest to him. Righteous, holy, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, spirit of his, he gave it up so that we could inherit the kingdom. Amen. Get your offering in your hand. And as we do that, I would be remiss if I didn't say that now is the time in this hour for those of you who don't know God, who want to know God. Amen. If you believe that he died and he lived and he died for our sins and he rose again, you can be saved and delivered right in your living room right in your bathroom, wherever you are. Just bow your head and say, Lord, forgive me, I have sinned. But Lord, I choose you in this hour to come into my life. Clean me up. Raise me up, God, and make me whole again. Lord, I'm, I'm just saying right now, I'm going to flee from my wicked ways so that I can now do the right thing. And I thank you. That's all you need to say right there. That's all you need to say. Have a heart of sincerity. Our number and our information is at the bottom of the screen. Amen. If you just write down in there and leave a little message, someone will call you back. And we will help you be accountable for the commitment that you just made. Amen. I'm excited for you if today is your first day. Those that come in the first and the last hour is the same. Hallelujah. Because he says, I'm a God. I could do all of that. You won't be last because you came last. Just because you was first don't mean you get to go first. He's not a person that holds levels. He just loves. Sin is a sin. None is greater or smaller than the other one. When we wrong, we wrong. And only God can redeem us. Amen. Anybody that need prayer, put it on that screen as well. We'll get back with you. We will pray with you. We will stand in agreement. If it's God's will, that is our prayer. We believe God to be a healer and a deliverer. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. He is a forgiving God. He is a loving God. Amen. Amen. Anyone in the house need prayer? Anyone in the house need prayer? We say a special prayer over the wall. 
of every person that's listed here. Lord, have your way and will in their life, God. You know their petitions, God. You created them, God. Let your will be done over their life and situation. Lord, we believe it is so. We stand on it. We declare it. We decree that it will be as you have it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. At this time, everyone is given. Excuse me. Oh. Oh. We are praying for my sister. Her name is on the on the wall. Keep her in her keep her in your prayers as she go through surgery on her back tomorrow. We know that God has already done it. Amen. Amen. We're going to also pray that this be the last surgery. Amen. 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 It is the last. We believe God for everything. He is the healer. Amen. I don't know that if my husband left, but Lord, even as he go to the hospital right now, God, Lord, you know who he is, God, and whose he is, God. Lord, right now, I don't know what's going on in his body, but right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I stand on the foundation that you are a healer of everything, God. Lord, and I'm asking that before he even sees the doctor, that he is well, that they find nothing, God. That he will come home better than it was even before he got ill. And Lord, we thank you in advance. And we claim the victory over his life. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for these provisions that you have set forth to be in this house, God. Lord, we thank you for every job or however they got these finances, God. We thank you, Lord, and we bless it tenfold, God. Lord, we ask that you just increase it, God, and that we do everything that you would have for us to do to build the kingdom, God, that there is no mismanagement, God, that every be, everything be done according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And at this time, if we have anything else, we want to say a special prayer for our pastors and for, for our pastor and first lady as they land and make their way make their way back to Fort Worth, Grand Prairie, Arlington. In their absence, Lord, we find that he is pleased with everything that we've done. Lord, we try to be obedient and operate the way that he would have it. And that's what we would do because we know we do things in excellence. Amen. Give it to God. But he is the person that holds the vision over this house. Pastor Harry Jesse, we thank you for the vision, God. So we want to be in order with what we do. And we give them, we give God our best. Amen. With that being said, go in God. Be happy, be blessed, be fruitful, and multiply the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Have a blessed day.